Hello guys, welcome back to another video. And no, this time I'm not gonna miss Fat Day. I'm sorry about that. Um, but we're gonna jump in immediately. So you know how like Go Kaskin people live right here? Well, I found built a wall. And they then started starving out all the Kokaskins. And you might be asking, well, why did they do that? Because why would they not do that? It's just smart. It's a smart thing to do for a smart thing to do. And so, yeah, they just do that. And, yeah. Now we're going to look over here because Africa, nobody recognizes each other. Except for Morocco. Because Morocco only doesn't recognize these guys. And, oh, also... Um, there's a rebellion in Iran for independence. Basically, some Palestinians, I think that's the demonym, the demonym, that's how you say it, right? I'm still not sure. But yeah, um, they say, hey, can we get independence? And Iran says no. And then they ask again, but nicer. And Ivan still says no. And then they ask again, this time even nicer, and they say fine. And so they were given that land. And so now you have Israel and Palestine back again. And Ivan doesn't recognize Palestine, but they're forced to because of the council. And also they collaborate in the council matters, just like how Ukraine does, Ukraine and Crimea do. And, oh look, let's look over here. So basically, these guys say, wait, why don't we just unite all of India? And so in a series of civil wars, they are gonna do the, just that. They are gonna be the one to unite India over the hundreds of years of Indian fragmentation. And yeah, they just push in. Whenever you're touched by them, that sounded wrong, you kind of just get invaded, and boom, they're at war with everybody now. And these guys are the last to surrender. And let's take a look at this peace tree. And boom, you have a united India. And China says, wow, it took you that long to unite? Wow. How did it take you that long to unite? You were you were fragmented for over a hundred years. And this is gonna be what Indians hate about China. Oh what's that? You guys hear something? Um so basically the French are having a civil war. And in it there, so who's the belly, you might ask? Oh, of course it's Iberia. And so they just, also this is both Spain and Portugal that are rebelling in this civil war. And so they just start pushing out and begin to conquer French territory. And everybody realizes, wait, this is the time that we can just gang up on the French. And so a lot of people start joining this war. And a lot of people start joining this war. Including both East and West Suez. Oh. Why does everybody want to kill France? Like, is, it, is France really that bad? Well, no, they're not as bad as, like, say, the Caucasian Empire, who committed mass genocide and got extremely big. Oh, wait, what? what's that? The council just authorized Russia to have a military and join the war? Oh, my God. That may or may not be the, the worst mistake of their life. We'll find out next episode. Maybe. Maybe this episode. We don't know. But yeah, the French is slowly falling, and 
Boom, the Danish are revolting. Wow, how bad of an empire do you have to be for your own people to be revolting? Like, the Caucasians at least had a huge revolution. The Crimeans at least got murdered by another nation. Oh, look, you have a naval landing over here. And they're inspiring the people to revolt. And so revolutionary ideas spread across Scotland. Oh, and Ireland. And Scotland rebels. England is not, though. At least not yet. And you have London being captured, which is a major city over here. So that's gonna that's gonna really hit the French. And so you have a naval landing over here in the Duchy of Normandy. And you have everybody pushing into France. And Iran has finally made Iranian troops have finally gotten over over here to these front lines, and, oh, yep, they're going to be sweeping the French. Now, why haven't the French made any territorial gains? Well, because the French are slow at everything. And a massive coalition like this, not, this one is not going to treat the French well. Oh, and Naples has revolted, and Sicily, and the island of Sardinia. And Corsica is considered a state of France, so it can't revolt. And, oh, Spain begins pushing into more states of France. And these guys meet up. And, oh. France's capital was just captured. That's not good. So, what's going to happen to everything else? Oh, well, the Italians are just doing the, the normal thing. That's pretty Italian of them. But yeah, what's, hap what's going to happen to the French? Well, we don't know yet. All we know is that the French have now lost all coastal access. Oh, wait, what's that? Is Poland revolting? Yay, Poland's revolting. And so the organized states of Poland have officially revolted. And you want to know what happens after Poland revolts? France dies. And so we're now going to have to take a look at this peace treaty. Okay, so taking a look at this peace treaty, you see France has been diminished to just that land. And, oh, I forgot about um, Portugal. Boom, that's Portugal. That's Spain. This is France. This is the Kingdom of Italy. This is Sicily. That is Naples. That is Austria. That is Hungary. That is Poland. And that is Germany. That is the that is the Dutch Republic. And that is Denmark. Oh, in Scotland and Ireland. Oh, and in England. And so that's just the rise and fall of the French Empire. They really did not last long. Why did they not last long, you ask? Because, of course, they didn't. And now we're going to take a look at the Italic Wars. Um, so this is going to be a series of wars that uh, kind of just... So this first one is between the Kingdom of Italy and Sicily and Naples. And let me do something real quick. Okay, I did something to where I can now do that. And boom, Sardinia is captured and Sardinia is established as a free republic. And the Kingdom of Italy. So basically, the First Italic War is what is going to fragment the um, Kingdom of Italy and Boom, you have them pushing up to here, and that's going to be the end of the war, because they decided to go into peace negotiations, so we're going to take a look at this peace treaty. Okay, so this is 
the border they established because that's what they thought would work. So, let me just give you a rough overview. This is them. That's the Papal States. And you already know that's Naples and that's Sicily, that's Sardinia, that's Corsica. But this is Tuscany and that's Venice. Well, actually, no, it's still the Kingdom of Italy. But basically, nobody recognizes it because. So basically, after the treaty, when they divided Italy into two, they said, everybody, you have to pick one Italy to recognize. And everybody was like, what? Also, yes, I still have this layer. And it's so funny to see how much the map changed. <laughs> Just look. That's how much the map changed. Just like, wow. But yeah, they kind of just do that. And also, as per the treaty, no, no French client states, Iberian client states, British client states, or Italian. I don't think I should use the word client state because that means something totally different. But like, I mean like region states. That's what I mean. So no Italian regional states. No French Italian, no French regional states, no German regional states, no Polish regional states, no Hungary regional states, no, no Dutch regional states, no British regional states, which includes Scotland and Ireland, and no Iberian regional states are able to gain land. But they can make new nations, which is why after the first Italic War, the Kingdom of Italy kind of lost so much land, which they, everybody's kind of recognizing the biggest guy, which can either be these guys or these guys. So it's kind of open interpretation. And so, in, let me just map out recognition. So in red, you have people that recognize that guy. And in blue, you have people who recognize um, Naples as the true Italian state. And everybody else recognizes different Italian states as the true heir to the Italian throne. And so yeah, that's the Italic War because Italy decided to be stupid. Oh, wait, what's that? A new a new kingdom is established within Germany. It's called Switzerland, and nobody recognizes it. It's kind of like a, like a, one of those, like, fake republics, like Abkhazia. I'm not saying Abkhazia doesn't exist, because it clearly does. After all, it has its own name, it has its own government. It has its own people. So Abkhazia obviously does exist, but nobody recognizes it. So it's kind of pointless to say something exists if nobody recognizes it. And uh, yeah, that's kind of why I put the border dispute there. And so basically, wait a minute. Oh, now we're doing the revolution. Oh, of course we are. So basically, the Swiss are not happy with with the German coloni colonizers because they were, I think, once independent, or at least they had their own representation in the French government, and so they're just rebelling, and Germany agrees to give them a generous amount of, more amount of land than what they were originally given. So like they gain a little bit of land in certain places because that's how things work. And so you have the Republic of Switzerland being established. And remember, they can't gain land. Oh wait. Is that what I think it is? 
Yep, it's fragmentation of Germany time. So you had the main government in blue, and oh, yep, these guys are the voting. Why? Because they feel like it, and so they're just gonna start pushing through. And they started conquering over here, and they let the people over here rise up. The Bavarians rose up. And so these guys were finally granted independence, and so they kind of just said, bye. And Bavaria was like, what? And so, yeah, that's kind of the state of the everything and so now you can see that Bavaria is declaring independence and now before we continue you have a Polish rebel group over here declaring independence now that's going to be important for later like later in the series but yeah we have Bavaria just kind of doing that and they are granted full independence and international recognition and so is Germany done fragmenting the question is is your mom done fragmenting yes then maybe but yeah these guys you wanna know what they are they're passions and they felt oppressed by the Polish and French people, and so they're rebelling. That's not a small famous revolt, like like this revolt over here that I still haven't named, because it was such a small revolt. But yeah, they're, they're big, and they just push over here next to Germany, and yeah, they gain land and they are granted this that's what they're granted and what about this land what does this land do well these guys revolt why because they want they want independence da -da. And so they just start pushing over here. And so they, the Polish people kind of just give them independence. But they're split right there because that's where the actual split is. Uh, and so that's the split we have. And so. They did not consider themselves Polish client states. Oh, by the way, they were given, they were ceded over this land by Poland because Poland didn't want that land because they were about to rebel. And they felt much happier with these guys. And they were considered a German client state because Prussia was German and everything west of it was considered the drop-off point of German. Oh, wait, what's that? Austria is invading Hungary. That's weird. But yeah, they they do that. Why? I don't know. But that will come into handy in about two thousand years. Like that event. Just remember it. Because in about 2,000 years, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come back up again. And they break the treaty by annexing them. Because they don't want to puppet them. And it just makes more sense to annex them. Oh, and then another revolt happens over here. And so they kind of just expand over here, cut off these guys. And that's the full revolt to its, ex to its final extent. And so, yeah, you kind of just have all that happening. And they are granted independence. 
And so we're going to just check the border real quick. And so you just take a quick look at that. And boom, 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 boom. And also these guys right here, um, they uh, actually play to these guys that I just unhighlighted because we're done with the German fragmentation because there won't be any more fragmentation for a while. Oh, and we're going to start another Ital Italic War. So basically, these guys are angry at Tuscany for existing. And also, the no expanding treaty was put in place, and they decided, okay, if you, if you get permission from the council, you can expand. And that's going to come into play in the next episode when we finish the Italic War. Hold on. Look. Let me just look at this. There's a second French war. I don't know if I showed you that. It ended in 76 BC. And the second Italic War will be ending Italic War will end in 32 BCE. And then also the first Italic War ended in 56 and 53 BCE. And so that's going to end this episode. I hope you guys liked it. So, goodbye.